things to watch out for if you're buying another honey farm. Hello, I'm Griffey, so welcome to Winnie Griffith. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living, how we do reviews as well. Now I'm just down on one of the sites that I've recently taken over. This is in a place called Castellhenses. Really cool tourist spot. Uh, lots of Stone Age stuff there. I'll, I'll uh, link everything in the description. But if you're down Pembroke, Cerdig, and we're on holiday, this is a really cool place to go. We'll do a video uh, around the site one day over the summer. But I'm on the site. Bees are looking pretty good. Most of the spring crop is still on. I have managed to take five full supers off uh, this morning here. Yeah, totally capped, but the majority is still not capped. A tiny bit on the wet side. So I was hoping to take most of these supers off today. And if they look like skyscrapers, the top one is definitely empty. Maybe the second one is as well. So I'm going ahead, knocking two supers on everything. Cause this, this is way out of my area. This is a good hours drive to get up here. You know, I can't manage these bees doing my weekly inspections. Uh, this far from home. So we manage them a little bit different. Seems to be working pretty good. The bees are staying. I've lost the odd swarm as you do, but you lose the odd swarm if you try and do seven days as well. So we're not spending too much money on diesel or labor and we're still getting a honey crop, which is good. Now, this is the Hawthorne. Like I was talking about in my last video and it is starting. See this bit of brownness. That is on the way out. So I don't know, three, four days, the Hawthorne will be well and truly over. Now to show some transparency, things don't go to plan all the time. That swarm was in there, scooped a few bees out, threw them there and just pumped that area with smoke until they all came there. So I'm gonna give them another 10 minutes, do this video, and then instantly move that swarm back on the stand. And that's it, we're keeping on top of it. Things are looking pretty good. Now out of the 50 or 60 hives, I still say 50, 60, I don't know uh, if some of the weaker ones are gonna make it yet. Um, if they're gonna come through, we're definitely gonna average a super each up here of honey, more than likely average two. So we, you know, not a massive spring crop, but if we get 50 odd supers, what's that gonna be? A little bit under half a ton. And if we go, some get uh, two supers, then, you know, maybe up to three quarter of a ton up here on the spring crop. And you know, considering I've just taken these bees on, I'll take that any day of the week because normally we don't get a spring crop at all in this part of Wales. So they take half a ton off up here. Uh, got a bit more honey uh, back at home around those sites. That's not a bad haul for spring honey because the main flow is yet to come. But like I tell everybody, this could be our summer and the spring crop could be rubbish. So if you have got decent supers on the truck, totally capped, take them off because you may not get the crop later on. Who knows with this crazy weather, what's gonna happen? Just the truck there, those are the supers that are totally capped. I've taken off this site. But more importantly, how and what do you do when you want to buy another honey farm over. Let's get into that. Now, if you're thinking about buying someone out or, you know, buying someone's business, buying someone's operation, buying their bees, keeping them on the site, similar to what I've done, there's a few things uh, best for you to consider uh, before you do it. And um, just this is going to be a little bit of help to you if you're thinking of increasing your business size or expanding. Um, there's a few good things to do before doing a deal and I'll talk you through uh, what I did uh, up this end. So the first thing you gotta make sure of that the two of you like each other. Now, if the two of you like each other, that's a good 
solid foundation to knock out the deal. Because if one person doesn't like the, each other, then the deal can go wrong. If someone's going to feel, oh, he's done me over, or blah, blah, blah. But when the two of you like each other, the two of you respect each other, and you, you know, become, become friends, then it's a lot easier to do a deal and get something through. Now, luckily, the, 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 the guy I bought, I bought the business of up here, me and him, we've known each other for a good few years. He actually supplied us honey uh, a few years ago when the, the honey crop was down 40%. Uh, we, we bought all his honey that year, and uh, we've, we've stayed in contact and we became friends ever since. So we felt uh, we had a solid foundation uh, to build upon. Now another thing when you when you buy a business, what I did was, no matter how good of friends you are with anybody, talk to the bee inspectors, because what I did with, with these bees, we, we, not, we agreed a price, I'm not going to tell you what I paid for, for all of this, um, you know, you've you got to work out the price between you and the two of you ha be happy with the deal. We agreed a deal and that was it. But going back to the bee inspectors, what I did with the bee inspectors, I told them that I was going to uh, take on all these bees and have another operation up in this end uh, of Wales. And that's going to create a permanent link between my base in Carmarthenshire, Ceredigion and Pembrokeshire. So if, if I were to take anything on with foul blue, there's a potential risk, then I'm going to make the whole area worse. So I asked them, you know, I'm going to buy, I'm thinking of buying these bees. Can you come with me and inspect all these bees uh, early spring and we can see uh, you know what the condition of the bees is but more importantly that there's no foul brood there fortunately enough the the national bee unit the bee inspectors agreed to do that so we came up here with uh, three bee inspectors we spent the whole day uh, we inspected everything no foul brood at all up here and then we were quite happy to do the deal and buy everything and, and take everything over so those for me are the two fundamental things you need when you go and buy another honey farm over, or you know, buy their bees. If you're buying up to you know, five or 10 beehives, I mean, there's no real need to, to go into into the, the hassle of getting the bee inspectors and everything out. But if, if they're willing to come out, I mean, that's gonna benefit you massively because it just takes a huge element of risk out of the deal. Again, the second, you know, and I'm pretty good at spotting foul brood. I say I'm pretty good. You know, I haven't had foul brood, I've had foul brood once, and I've been on the, the dash training and everything up in York. So, you know, I'm pretty confident I'd, I'd find it. But to get the bee unit out, bee inspectors that see foul brood all the time, they're going to be much, much better than me at finding uh, foul brood. So I, want, I felt a lot more comfortable, you know, spending this kind of money that the bee inspectors came here checked everything over and that gave me massive peace of mind and uh, we did the deal from there so that's what i would do number one get to know the person you want to buy the bees or the business off if you feel he's dodgy or she's dodgy things are not quite right walk away because you can end up spending thousands of pounds and having big big problems and you know uh, another thing i forgot to mention when you when you when you're taking this this much bees on and they're on other people's land the person you're buying the bees off, you got to make sure that they agree with the landowner beforehand that they're going to sell up, there's a new beekeeper going to take over. Are they okay with that? And they vouch for you. So the new landowner isn't just taking you on, uh, you know, like a new, total different person. You know, the, the, the person before you has vouched for you uh, to take that on. So that's another thing. So th three, three good tips there for anyone thinking of buying, uh, buying you know, a substantial number of bees or, or taking on uh, a honey farm or another honey farm like, like I've done. Recap, get to know the person you're buying the bees off and trust. So there's trust both ways. Get the bee inspectors out if they're able to do so. No, sometimes they obviously can't if they're really busy and they're stretched. Um, but much better to get them on board so you're starting uh, a new chapter of your business with, with a fresh slate, no disease. Because, um, you know, if they find foul brood, I mean, you want to find that foul brood before you buy the bees. Uh, so you can walk away. Because once you've bought the bees and the deal is done, you're committed, then that becomes your problem. So, number two. And then number three, 
get the person that you're buying the beers from to talk to all the landowners beforehand for them to vouch for you and then for them to tell you i've spoke with everybody everything seems okay they want to meet you but it's looking okay that's as much as you can do the landowners may still say uh you know what you're leaving we, we, we're gonna draw a line under there the new guy's gotta gotta take everything away that could happen there's some good tips there for you if you are thinking uh, of doing like I've done and you know spending a substantial amount of money buying more bees and you know expanding into new horizons like they say. So hopefully you found this video useful and uh, don't forget if you like this video don't forget to click the bell button click that subscribe button and I'll uh, you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded we try our best to upload new videos every week. Thanks for watching.